Okay, I am putting final thoughts um, out there uh, as an intro. So to be clear, this is a video about uh, taking a Swiss Army knife apart and then how to put it back together again. But more than that, why do we take one apart? Probably to modify something. So I didn't have a modification in plan going into this. I just happened to have, I think it's a Tinker um, or two of them uh, as spares that I had bought used uh, in order to cheaply uh, foray into this world of taking Swiss Army knives apart and putting them back together again. So with what I had, what simple modification could I make? Um, so that was the only forethought there. So um, it is taking the tool apart and then in the middle will be this experimental part and then how to put it back together again. Um, it's a long video, it's uh, under an hour, but it's still pretty long, but that's truncated. I was actually messing around with this for about three, three and a half hours, partly because I encountered an obstacle along the way, but the point was to actually give an honest accounting. You'll see often these very short videos um, with how to do things, one, two, three, four, uh, and so on, and it looks so perfect and easy and efficient, but I think maybe just as instructive is to show a lot of what doesn't go well, um, or whether it's an error, in my case, one of my tools broke, and how did I sort things out accordingly? And, you know, I think of it as like a travel photograph where you have somebody taking a picture and everything looks perfect. You know, it's like the Instagram shot or something. But in reality, uh, it's a zoo, it's loud, it's crazy. Maybe there's a bunch of snotty-nosed tourists right next to you, but you don't see that in the photo. So I've created the snotty-nosed version of this video to show you the good, the bad, and the ugly, and I think all of it hopefully will be helpful. Um, I think it's all, you know, when you do a modification, unless you're modifying an entire layer by removing it or adding one like I did, if you look at my video for my bladeless multi-tool where I sort of took the blade out and then merged some of the um, different tools from the Explorer and the Deluxe Tinker, unless you're doing those whole layers, um, mix and matching tools within a layer, um, it's probably not going to work. The tolerances are built just so with the ridges on that spine, the ergonomics of the tool so that they snap open and close properly so they align this way properly. So, you know, unless you're dremeling things, fabricating new things, coming up with other much more advanced propositions, um, that's pretty much as far as the modifications are limited to, at least so far as I can tell. Somebody tell me if I'm wrong. You know, there's simple things you can do, like a quick swap out of the corkscrew and the, um, you know, sort of T-shaped uh, Phillips. But mostly I'd say, Swiss Army Knife Victorinox makes great tools that work perfectly without us mucking around with them. Even with the bunch that they're eliminating soon, um, there's still a bajillion to choose from. Probably just stick with one of those. There's so many options. Um, also, if you're buying a modified Swiss Army Knife uh, tool that somebody else has charged you X amount for, they're probably charging a fair price. It's a lot of work. There's their time, materials, skill. <laughs> I, I dare anybody to do it themselves and see uh, if they think that price, whatever it is, isn't fair. Um, okay, so I'll put this in chapters so that hopefully it's not too cumbersome and I hope it's instructive or helpful for someone in some way. Okay, thanks. So when taking off the scales, you can use uh, any kind of narrow tool to just pry and pop them off. If you're not reusing the scales, you can be pretty careless about it. If you think you may, then it makes sense to heat these up, uh, boil some water, give it a sec, and then just warm up the scales in there. Um, when removing these little scale tools, it creates a pocket by which it's relatively easier to try to squirrel a tool under there and slide it around. So let's see how that goes. I bought extras off of, I think, eBay in the two different sizes. The 
size of 2.5 millimeters and 2.2 millimeters. You'll see here that whether it's the corkscrew or the screwdriver, this one you just teen right over the scale. It doesn't require the bushing. So that's an easy mod if you ever want to change a corkscrew to a screwdriver. You don't even have to mess with all of this. It's just a matter of filing that down, pressing it through, and then popping in a new rod. This is some soft wood, so it looks a bit like a hot mess, but it's helpful to um, create a platform like this to help secure the tool while you're working with it so that it's not sliding about, but also so that when you do hammer through the rods, they um, can fall through. Otherwise, you're just hammering into your table, right? So, okay, I'll line all that up and give this a go. And you see the trick here is to go slow. I forgot a good idea is to use this to punch a center hole to try to guide the drill. It hopes that it doesn't skittle about too much when drilling through here. Starting to get close to the edge there. I want to be careful. I'm going to keep going with these. I'm not sure I have quite enough out there. This part is the most tedious part, I think, of the whole process. Again, I've forgotten give a center punch here. Let me do that. Oh, that's hilarious. Look at that. That's unusual. <laughs> that rod went through no problem. Never had that happen before. Let me see if I can use these to sort of skittle this off. There we go. So we want to make sure to protect these guys as best we can, especially if you haven't managed to procure some backup. It's going to be important to use tape or something typically to help secure things because if it all goes blurp in your hands, especially if you don't have a sort of exploded diagram, it'll get really confusing really fast in terms of um, putting things back where you intend. All right, let's go for this last one here. And it's so easy. I wasn't taking my own advice to take my time there. So easy for the drill to speed along off course and start to bum up uh, the rivet. Like I said, this is the part where you're supposed to take your time and I get impatient, hence having bought the backup rivets. I think if my center punch had gone a bit deeper, I might've had better luck as well. Yeah, now it just wants to slide out of place. Been trying to put pressure laterally in this direction to try to compel the drill bit not to keep squirreling towards the edge, but rather towards the center. Can't tell if that's working yet. Making progress a little bit. Might even try to give that a punch with this wide one first. A little more on this edge.
I knew that was going to happen. This thing has frequently bent when I've tried to use it. Um, we may be shit out of luck here, but I'm going to keep trying with what I have and see what we can accomplish. There's a little progress there. It's being stubborn. I think now that it's more cord out in the middle, I can keep trying to go this route. Yeah. Well, good news and bad news. The rivet is toast. It's got a crack along the side here. So, <laughs> like I said, knowing that I wasn't patient and knowing that sometimes even with patience, it's possible to goof this up, I did buy those extras. So, right. I'm back with the nail. Hopefully this does the trick. It's so soft, what a bummer. I'm not ready to give up yet though. Let's work on this last side. Then I'll come up with a strategy that hopefully you won't have to deal with. This had already been weakened from prior attempts. I should have probably gotten one a little bit thicker. Might have helped. Um, or maybe I just needed to core out more with the drill before I ever did any of those other attempts as well. But <laughs> what a bummer. When I hammer everything hops off the table. Let's see if I can get that to cooperate a little better. It's come through a little bit. Maybe this is an okay time to uh to tape things in place. Well, normally things should go relatively quick and easy for you here if your tools don't bust on you in the middle of operations. But I'm gonna do my best to keep going. All right. Never give up. Well, sometimes give up, but <laughs> we're not there yet. Okay, you can see those are all starting to move on the back side. In keeping with Swiss Army knife, Victorinox, I'm gonna grab those pliers. They may become helpful. Although I'm gonna admit, I'm not sure they're the best option. Um, and it may make sense to go ahead and file that off now before everything else becomes unstable. Okay. Don't really care about little scratches there, although it's certainly reasonable to be a little more delicate with the process, should you like. Let me see if that will now push through. There it goes. All right, now let's see if some of this will just pull through with these guys. Yes, there goes one. I'm sorry, Swiss Army Knife multi-tool pliers to have disparaged you earlier. You seem to be as capable as anything would be for this. Again, normally I would just punch these all the way through, but I'm improvising now since that tool is no longer available. So while you can try to save the rivets, you can't really save the rods. So that's one place you can definitely take permission to uh, be a little more roughing. 
you know, the fact that this bent trying to push the rod through before um, perhaps should illustrate that it's not easy. Um, I'd love it if somebody out there who's more expert at this could tell me how they're able to push it through. Is it a different um, level quality that's more robust? Do they use one that's a little thicker than this one? This is 1.5 millimeter. Any tips uh, would be helpful there. Although I have to admit, I'm not sure that this idea of an interesting hobby is proving to be as interesting to me as I thought it might be. Um, I don't know, I think there's not as many easy to do modifications as I thought there might be. And, um, you know, in all the possible ways I could spend a day, I can't say that this doesn't feel sometimes like a bit of a chore. You know, it's kind of fun actually making this video for you when things don't go well because it's more illustrative of reality for most people at least when they're probably first thinking about doing this sort of stuff is you're gonna get curveballs or challenges are gonna come up that you don't necessarily anticipate all right I'm gonna to have to do this a different way. I've got an idea. Let me just show you. This one doesn't have so many layers, so it's not really so tricky to figure out. Um, this owl came off the back side here, so that's worth trying to remember. But I'm able to peel this layer off. And then we have small knife, which, aha, uh -huh. you know that, I see why that doesn't want to come out. You can see a little bit here. We have the small knife with a spacer behind it, the large knife. We have the backbone here. I think using my Dremel to, again, you don't see this stuff, so it's not like you have to be super protective. I also happen to have backups of all of these in other dissected sacks, but I'm gonna do like this. Well, my intention to um, show you <laughs> the value of keeping all of this orderly is kind of befuddled by this particular challenge that I'm finding, um, but there are exploded diagrams online it's kind of how I figured things out when I bumbled things up. So I will reference that to put all of this in order again um, and go from there. But for now, I'm really in a position of simply needing to do the best I can to actually get this thing apart without a tool to push it through. Now that this is a little thinner, I'm gonna try this again. There we go. I really like to keep an organized workspace and fortunately this has become quite a cluster in the way one, it's authentic, isn't it though? To the fact that this isn't always easy, I'm gonna to have to remind myself exactly how that spacer goes under there. steady. Don't give up even when things are a pain in the butt. Oh, it really doesn't want to press through there. I don't know why. That's not a part that I've manipulated yet where that makes sense to me. So I'm just going to try doing it like this again. Don't you feel like we're just hanging out? This is such an unprofessional YouTube video, which um, makes sense. I'm not actually too concerned about it being fancy pantsy. 
Although for those of you that are very impressed with what you come up with, with your cameras and audio and all that whiz bang stuff. Okay, so I do have this uh, knife, fortunately, as a backup visual to how I might reassemble things. But instead of just putting it back together automatically um, as it was, I'm gonna experiment with whether or not I can replace this um, blade with this flat head. Yeah, I'm not sure that's gonna work too great, but whatever, we can experiment and see how it goes. This is where I often strug struggle in terms of even being interested in pursuing this <laughs> ongoing, is creating the tension necessary to nest a final tool in the arrangement so that all the tools have the kind of pop and tight tension that you want it to have versus everything waffling about too much. I'm not sure how to lay that in there easiest. Yeah, so you get one thing in and then the other thing pops out. All right, I think I've figured out what will work. I'm gonna use my pliers edge along the spine to snug it, put pressure on it using counter pressure against the scale. I think if I do this and then line it up here, it will work. Okay, so this is what I've come up with. Let's see if it'll work. I realized maybe the spacer that I was trying to fit wouldn't work collectively with this tool um, because this old uh, scale, I don't know if you can see this, it's a bit bent. Instead of trying to straighten that out, I just had another outer scale to try. And um, this is sort of like the waiter, except for with the um, Phillips here instead of the corkscrew. Uh, what I want to test is, it feels okay if the height here is the same so that the top scale will nest properly. So let's see what happens. Well, I think that looks pretty good. It's hard to know for sure um, with any of these things until you actually tighten it. Um, with the rivets. It's not perfectly even. Now this side sits higher than this side. The compact has a similar setup with one of these um, type tools lined up with the main blade, but it's thinner than is typical. You know, the width this way is thinner than is typical. Otherwise, yeah, I can see this as being a little bit weird or a bit of a problem. On the other hand, I'm kind of open to just seeing what happens. I mean, who cares, right? This is a pretty low price of uh, admission to play with. So I had this bag of these little washers and thought of putting one in a spot like this, but I'm not sure that's <laughs> gonna be great, but maybe, I mean, I don't know. I like the idea of keeping any modification going with just the sack parts, but I don't think any unusual modification, at least, not that this is terribly much unusual, is done with um, out use of additional considerations so this is not tight 
but it'll be tight, tight enough if I snug everything together. Let's just see here. It's definitely better this way in terms of the height matching, but it might bug me um, in terms of seeing that gap, you know, on the back end, on the back of a Swiss Army knife. You really want to see everything flush. It'd be weird if you saw some gaps in there between the, the spines and the tools. So should I do it or not? I say let's do it just to keep things moving so I can show you putting this thing back together before I'm too <laughs> tired or bored or whatever with the whole situation. Okay, so here I've sort of pre-peened just enough to hold those back rivets on, which hopefully will make this process go more smoothly in general as we're doing a final assembly. Okay, I'm going to put a couple of spare parts that I have under here to try to stabilize things since with the rivets on the back, uh, it's become a little wobbly. So let's see here. Put the spine in place. Main blade. Phillips. Spacer. I can get this to cooperate. Here's the area of most leverage. So I think this is where I'll have the best luck. Trying to pull that up and get that in. Now let's see if I can go ahead and get this right on there too while I'm at it. Oh boy. Oh, nope. The blade popped out. That's okay. We'll try again. cut this out from a spare external scale to see if that would create proper spacing here. Is that the right way? Nope, this way. Lines up properly. Now we can try to put on this last scale. Okay, that's all right. The point is the process for the purposes of this video. Um, what should I do here? I think what I'm gonna do is try to keep things taped. You can tell I haven't been doing this long enough to fine tune my process and learn what's most efficient. So I can't state it enough. Any and all suggestions are welcomed. <laughs> this 
is so messed up. Whatever. I'm going to see it through and just see how it functions. I'm going to snip almost all of this. I'm going to leave more than I normally would at the top because once I start painting this, I'm also going to be dealing with the back that's not fully done yet. But now that everything's shorter, those rods are less likely to bend as I'm peening, peening and working the edges here. So wish me luck. I prefer to make sure I have too much than too little because I can always file it down if it's too tall for the scale or just too tall altogether. But if you snip it too short, then you're really in a pickle. So you can see it's still a bit too long on this back side. So I'm going to try to just mushroom them both up so it's properly snug and then fine tube from there. If I end up with a big mushroom cap, that's okay. Like I said, I'll file it. Don't try to go too tight without testing your tools because it's possible to snug it so well that it's hard to open and close the tool. I'm confident I am not yet there with this. I'm gonna keep going. Normally just like a millimeter is maybe enough, but I'm going again closer to two since the back side is not fully completely capped. Ideally when you're painting, it's probably better instead of the snippers often leave a point. If you were to file that flat, you'd probably get a better jump start on the peen and a more proper job of it. I just, uh, because I have the plastics or celador, whatever it's called, uh, scales over this. I don't care how pretty it is, but this would matter a lot more to get this right and fine tune this if you are working with the A-lock scales. I'm gonna cut this short too, just to get it out of the way. It's too much in the way here. Decent little mushroom cap on there. So I'll go ahead and try that if I let it push all the way down. Now I can snip this closer. So, let's see. Let's cut the tape off. <laughs> this is gonna be messed up, I can tell. But, how messed up? A little stiff there. Ah. That sticks up weirdly far. I actually didn't expect that to that extent. Ah. Very interesting, okay. So, gosh, how can I show this? When this becomes tensioned, it ends up pulling the knife from out of the way into the way. It pulls the knife from down here 
up into the way of the bottle cap lifter. That's so interesting. Yeah, this doesn't really work at all. I mean, it does. It totally works, but it's not elegant. It's like definitely a Franken solution. So what I can say for sure also is that the scales are not going to want to go on there with this much extra um, of the rod that needs to be hammered down, but it is doable. I would simply file some of that off so that it's flat and then these scales will go on there. No problem. So this would have been a great option if I had simply just left it with the large and small blade and the screwdriver, but having a Phillips head without any kind of flat head option on a sack just seemed dumb. So I'll probably leave this the way it is, um, even though it's weird, just for <laughs> my archive of um, Franken tools. I'll real quick file these down and then you can um, take a peek with the scales on. My apologies for rushing the peening in the first place and making a video where you'd imagine I would take the time to do it right uh, as a presentation, um, but the tendency is to rush a little bit and that's what I had done. At least that was <laughs> happens to be my tendency. If I had taken the time to peen the end um, closer to the desired outcome. Then when I stacked all of the tool parts and then had to peen the other side, I would have put myself in a better position for an easier and more successful outcome. So it's not perfect, um, but then this could be tapped on a little more to, to flush it around the perimeter a bit better. So here we are with the final product. Of course, the tweezer and um, toothpick function normally as if unmessed around with. Um, Phillips snaps uh, open and closed just fine. This bottle cap lifter, I filed a little bit off of it because it was sticking out too far before. Um, but also what I had to do was that the uh, fingernail groove um, wasn't very accessible, as you can see behind the blade there. So I just made a groove on this side as well. And of course we have the main blade. I'd say the flaw of this knife is that the main blade is a bit hard to open. Um, and sometimes when wanting to close it, these, one of these tools, when closing it, will might bump into the other one. Uh, mostly it's fine, but it's not perfect precision. So, again, stiff blade, sometimes bumping in. But actually, now that the blade is stiffer, it bumps less. So I guess that was a trade-off. Anyway, so-so. Thanks for joining.